I want to play a clip featuring Dave Rubin because I think it is perfect at demonstrating precisely why conservatives and Republicans always hyper focus on like these surface level culture war nonsense issues. And it's because their policies are incredibly unpopular. Like imagine if they tried to sell you their agenda based on the economics of it. If they said, hey, how would you like it if we gave tax breaks to the rich and never raised the minimum wage and uh, busted up unions like the American people wouldn't like that. And even when they try to make like an economic appeal to Americans, working Americans, it doesn't land. It's disingenuous. So what they usually do is try to cultivate goodwill by focusing on the issues that are more relatable. So, you know, if you like Dr. Seuss, then they're going to spend an entire week screaming about how Dr. Seuss was canceled when in actuality, the company itself decided to pull six, six books. Um, so Dave Rubin is going to attempt to make an actual economic appeal to Americans to get them to be conservative. So he's going to give us some insight. This is the argument that he uses that he thinks might actually persuade people, particularly college students who are more liberal, more leftist oriented. Um, so we're going to watch this. This might work on you, according to him. And then when we come back, we'll determine whether or not this argument is persuasive. Um, but there are a couple techniques you can use. I would say it's very hard to, to get them to join you or to listen to you if you're just drubbing them with facts. It's very hard to do. What you can do is you can turn some of this on them. So one thing that I've found is at least somewhat effective when I go to colleges, before I do anything, I'll say, you know, does anyone in this room have it worse than their grandparents? Good question. And if you live in the West, especially if you live in the United States, but I suspect it's very, very similar here. And in most Western countries, you have it way better than your grandparents. Mm -hmm. In many cases, your grandparents were immigrants who came with nothing. That's obviously a very uh, consistent thing that's happened in the United States or certain maybe your great grandparents or whatever. Um, but, you know, had to, they had to live through war and famine and all sorts of, you know, all sorts of things. It's very rare that if you live in the United States that your grandparents who were alive in, say, the 30s and 40s and 50s, uh, had it better than you. And if they did, they were probably oil tycoons or something. And then if they have it better than you, that means that they, the family lost the money over generations, which the left would love because they don't want to keep accumulated wealth. I love how at the end there, he just pretended as if dynastic wealth isn't a thing when it's quite literally linked to record high income and wealth inequality. I mean, what a joke. So um, you've seen the clip. This is the argument that he uses that he thinks might work. Uh, are you persuaded? Are you a conservative now? Did that one question that he thinks is very persuasive actually change your mind? Of course it didn't. Because that actually is going to hurt his case. If you actually think, and you're a young college student, am I doing better than my grandparents? Um, the answer is an unequivocal no. See, when your grandparents were in college, they weren't burdened with student debt for the rest of of their lives. And if they took out student loans, they could pay it off easily over a summer working at McDonald's. And on top of that, they can buy a house, buy a car, support an entire family all on one income. Whereas nowadays, that's not possible. You need two incomes to really get by and actually earn a living. And there are all these other costs associated with two parents working, I mean, daycare, there's so many obstacles that prevent people from actually earning comparably as much as their grandparents earned that for him to say that it shows how out of touch he is because he's a multimillionaire because he bought a mansion and he is doing better than his grandparents. He's thinking, look, things are better now. Uh, I'm doing better economically than the last generation, than the rest of my family. So it must be the case that everybody else is doing better as well, except that shows that you're out of touch, Dave. Not everyone is doing better. Not everyone can become a multimillionaire by being a gay Republican. Congratulations, you're a token gay Republican who bashes gay and trans people, like enables their bigotry, gives Don Jr. permission to use gay slurs against you, and you were able to find that to be lucrative, but that's not going to be something that most people, most young people, are going to be able to do as a career path. Uh, he says here, it's very hard to get them to join you or listen to you if you're just drubbing them with facts. Yeah, I wonder why you'd say that. It's almost as if you don't know any facts and that the facts of the matter, the objective empirical facts, aren't very helpful to conservatives. 
Now, there is some truth to what he's saying um, if we are more charitable in that people oftentimes will respond more uh, with like an emotional argument if you make an appeal to emotions. But what's the emotional argument that conservatives make? Well, they'll say, look, I mean, uh, the left wants to cancel you. <laughs> they want to get rid of Dr. Seuss and Mr. Potato Head. Whereas the actual emotional argument that the left makes is that, hey, People are dying every single year because they don't have health care. They can't afford their insulin. They can't afford to see a doctor. This is absolutely egregious. It can happen to anyone. Maybe we should have Medicare for all. So even our emotional appeals are actually founded in reality, whereas when the right makes emotional appeals, it's hysterical. It's nonsense. Completely bombastic and idiotic. He also argues that your grandparents had it worse because they had to live through war and famine, as if that's not something that this current generation is living through. Zoomers who were born at the start of the Iraq war are now quite literally old enough to fight in it themselves. And sure, like worldwide, there's been improvements in the standard of living, but you also have to understand that your grandparents have a privilege that none of us will have. Millennials and Zoomers will not have the privilege of growing old and not being too affected by climate change. I mean, we're already seeing the effects of climate change in certain communities around the world. They're already seeing it. But basically, if you're old now, you can kind of live a relatively normal life. But when we're old, when we're living out our golden years, we may very literally see wars over water because of climate change. That's also a luxury that our grandparents had uh, have now that we won't have. So for him to say this, like, there's so many reasons why our grandparents had it better than us. And the main one, if you're trying to appeal to economic arguments, is the New Deal, something that Dave Rubin is against. Neoliberals in both parties, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, destroyed the New Deal reforms. Unions, their prominence, has gone down significantly. And as a result, the working class is struggling. The middle class is disappearing altogether. So if your entire pitch to young people is, hey, think about like whether or not you're doing better than your grandparents, you're not going to persuade anyone. Sure, there are generational differences when it comes to technology. We have computers now. We have smartphones. And that is an improvement. But if you're actually trying to make an economic argument then you're only going to get them to think about how fucked they are in comparison with their parents and their grandparents. So um, this is why Republicans have to uh, remain hyper-focused on these weird wedge issues and cultural issues. Because without that, they couldn't persuade regular people because nobody wants to see more tax cuts for the rich. When you look at public opinion polls, Americans, by and large, agree with the left on policies. They want to see an increase to the minimum wage. They want to see pot legalized nationwide. They want to see a single payer Medicare for all healthcare system. But when it comes to like the right, your ideas are unpopular. You've got nothing. So you have to either focus on culture war issues or lie about your economic agenda and pretend as if you're for the working class while every single Republican votes against the $15 an hour minimum wage. And what was it like only five Republicans in the house joined with the democratic party to pass the pro act, which would help people form unions. It's just, it's laughable. Um, but I'm glad that Dave Rubin is uh, sharing his insight into how the right recruits, because I don't think we have um, much to be concerned with when it comes to their economic arguments, uh, because this is not very persuasive to say <laughs> the very least. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas.